What's up, everybody? This is the professor, and I'm here to talk to you today about the vertebrae. But I, I want to talk about two things in particular. I want to talk about what vertebrae are and what they actually do. Because sometimes I think that some of these bones, um, they're easier to understand and easier to learn when you know what they are and what they do. So first thing first, like back in the day, we used to teach um, categories of bones and we used to refer to vertebrae as regular bones. You know, they don't have a specific shape to them. They just look like something else, right? Um, this is a cervical vertebrae. This is a thoracic vertebrae. And this is a lumbar vertebrae. Now, you've probably heard some of what I'm about to say on a previous video or in your classes, so I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but you actually have 24 vertebrae, three different types. And um, one of the ways to remember how many of each type there are is the breakfast, lunch, dinner method. There are seven cervical vertebrae, there are 12 thoracic vertebrae, and there are five lumbar vertebrae. That's the breakfast, lunch, dinner method. Early breakfast at 7, lunch at 12, and an early dinner at 5. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. 7, cervical vertebrae, 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar. And each one of them is totally different from the other, and they have you know different responsibilities. Like, you can tell from the name, cervical is going to be in your neck. That's providing strength and um, you know movement for your head and neck. And then you've got thoracic, which is, you know, no brainer, located in the thoracic area of your body. And then you have the lumbar vertebrae, which, yep, you guessed it. That's in the lower back or the lo lower part of your um, of your body cavity. Now, here's the interesting thing, though. Um, out of the three of these, the one that's carrying the most weight is your lumbar vertebrae. The purpose of your lumbar vertebrae, uh, one of the purposes anyway, is to carry the weight of your upper body. So if you were to take the weight of your upper body, everything from your waist on up, all of that weight is being propped up by your lumbar vertebrae, which is why if you're a nurse or a cashier or a waiter or a waitress, someone who's on their feet all day, that's why your back hurts is because your upper body weight it's all on just these five guys. So, you know, kudos to all of my people out there who work jobs that have you on your feet 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That, that's where the pressure is going. Um, these bones are designed for uh, a series of different purposes, right? Um, one of the reasons why you have vertebrae is they're designed to protect the spinal cord. You see this foramen here? this big hole right there in the middle, that foramen is where your spinal cord is passing through. Now, the average adult spinal cord is anywhere between 12 and 15 inches long. So don't get too excited about the spinal cord. That thing is actually kind of short when you look at the average adult human. Basically, what happens is you grow into your spinal cord. Like when you look at a baby, their spinal cord goes from the base of their skull all the way down to, you know, going towards their tailbone. Um, but as you get older and grow longer, uh, the spinal cord doesn't necessarily grow that much longer or that much faster, but the rest of your body does. So you actually grow into your spinal cord, which is kind of weird. But the spinal cord passes through these little foramen here, and then they end... Um, uh, at the midway, uh, midway down your back, and then they break out into bundles of nerves like the uh, cauda equina. Um, another thing is that your vertebrae provide attachment points for different muscle groups and ligaments. So when you're looking at all these weird spiky things sticking off of the vertebrae, I'm, you know some of these places are attachment points for things. So for example, these spinous processes sticking out on the side. These transverse processes over here, these transverse processes are actually places where you have little ligaments 
and little muscles that attach to them. When you hurt your back, usually people are thinking that it's some big muscle in their back that they tore. Uh-uh. It's usually a little muscle probably about this long. And I know that my hand is really close to the video camera right now, but you know, you're talking about muscles that are like this long. It's really short. And ligaments that are that small as well. And remember, ligaments aren't there to help you move per se. Ligaments are actually there to restrict and resist movement so that you don't go beyond the range of motion of that joint. Because once you go beyond the range of motion of some of these joints, you actually tear tissue, you tear muscles, you tear ligaments. And these ligaments or muscles are attached to places like these processes and these processes and this spinous process right here. So all these little weird things sticking out all over these vertebrae are actual attachment points for muscles and ligaments. And that's very important for uh, your back and bo upper body movement. Another thing that the vertebrae are important for is that, uh, well, at least your thoracic vertebrae, they act as attachment points for your ribs. Now, if you look at this thoracic vertebrae, it's like, it looks kind of weird, right? So if we were looking at you from the side, like this was a lateral view of your back. We could see that um, we've got these little dumbo ear things sticking out on both sides. All right, that's where some different muscles and ligaments are going to attach. But if you rotate this thoracic vertebrae around like this, and you look very carefully you'll see that this area on the process is smooth and rounded. See that where my thumb is? That's smooth and rounded. And over here, will you look at that? That's smooth and rounded. The reason why that area is smooth and rounded and that area is smooth and rounded is because that's where your ribs articulate. Believe it or not, your ribs wrap all the way back around your body and they articulate here. So basically what I'm saying in a fancy way is that you've got 12 pairs of ribs and those 12 pairs of ribs articulate with your 12 thoracic vertebrae. And that's why you got 12 of these things. So your vertebrae wrap around and they articulate here and there, and then they go around to the front or the anterior side of your body. Now, of course, it depends on which rib you're talking about as to what it articulates at the front of your body. That's a different video. But for right now, we're just talking about the posterior or dorsal side of your body. And that's where these vertebrae are. And so your ribs articulate here. Another thing to think about is, okay, how do I tell these things apart? Well, by now, you stared at this long enough to be able to tell that they look different, right? The way that I used to look at these vertebrae is I used to look at them as uh, other objects altogether. I told you earlier um, that one of the classifications that vertebrae are held under is the classification of irregular bones because they have these weird shapes. They don't have normal shapes, right? They're not shaped like a cube. They're not shaped like a circle. They're not shaped like something that is a specified shape. They are irregular. They, they look like strange things. So the cervical vertebrae back in the day uh, when we had arcades, you know, right now arcades are online. When I want to play a game uh, in an arcade, you know, I'm, I'm logging in online to play against somebody halfway around the world. But back in ye olden days when dinosaurs ruled the earth, there were arcades that you actually walked into and you paid money and played these games. And there were old school games like Galaga and whatnot. And these games would have little spaceships that would move around on the screen. You could go back and forth and up and down. Uh, that's what this looks like. It looks like a little overhead spacecraft that's fighting, uh, fighting bad guys, right? And that's a cervical vertebrae. Um, another thing about cervical vertebrae that is very different from lumbar and thoracic is that cervical vertebrae are, is, are the only vertebrae with three holes. See, there's a foramen there, there's a foramen there, and there's a foramen there. Um, the reason why it has three holes is because the largest one in the middle is for your spinal cord, but the little small ones on both sides 
are for arteries and veins. Pretty interesting, huh? So that's the cervical vertebrae. Your thoracic vertebrae, um, it resembles a cervical vertebrae until you see it up close like this. And then you begin to notice, oh, yeah, that looks pretty different. This thoracic vertebrae only has one hole. And that hole, that foramen, is much rounder than the one on the cervical vertebrae. Also, it's missing the two side holes. And it doesn't have as many attachment points. See all those attachment points? And compare it to this, this thoracic vertebrae. doesn't have as many attachment points. And that spinous process in the back slopes. So it gives it the look of a giraffe. Do you see it? You see the giraffe here? Like this is the slope of its, of its snout. And these are the little ears on the giraffe. Right? So that's the thoracic vertebrae. And then you got the lumbar vertebrae, which people almost always get this one right because lumbar is so large. It's just lumbering along. Uh, lumbar vertebrae looks like the head of a moose. Or if you're a Dragon Ball Z person, it looks like the head of Frieza's older brother, Cooler. Right? Or it looks like the crest on a on a dinosaur, but it's very large, and the body of this vertebrae is very wide. You notice that the body on the, the thoracic vertebrae is very small. The body there is a little wider, but this one it it takes the prize. This is a very large vertebrae here, and it should be because it's carrying the weight of your upper back. Now, something else you don't want to forget about vertebrae, and I'll say this really quick and let you go, is that the orientation of your vertebrae also lend to your height, right? So um, when people talk about they're getting shorter as they're getting old, there's a little truth to that. What's really happening is as their bones are beginning to break down and as they're losing bone mass in their vertebrae, they're actually losing a bit of height. Um, and so that's also why uh, when I went started going to physical therapy and I was also seeing the chiropractor, they started working out um, some areas of my back and my vertebrae and they added a quarter of an inch to my height. It's kind of crazy. People were looking at me saying, you look different. And I said, ah, it might be that quarter of an inch. And I don't know if people really picked it up. I think what really happened was because between all the therapy that I was getting, it worked out the pain in my back. So I was able to stand more erect plus that quarter of an inch. So really they were seeing me not being in pain and standing straight up more so. But still, your vertebrae lends to your overall height. And lastly, it also helps with your gait or your walk or your ability to be able to run. If your vertebrae are out of alignment, then that will directly affect the way that you walk and run because at the bottom of your vertebrae, they articulate with your sacrum, which is a part of your overall pelvis. And so that's what lends to that. Well, that's all we have time to talk about for today. I hope you got something good out of this. Just a quick and easy to give you a rundown on some things that you may have not known about the vertebrae. Uh, remember to hit that like button if you learned something today and subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave us a comment at the bottom to let us know something else that you'd like to know about, something else you want us to cover in our videos. This is the professor taking it to you to both sides of the desk. Peace.